Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the John Audio Tech Show. The Juan Audio Tech Show. On the bench today, we have a subwoofer amplifier board to review. Now, this was sent in to me by a company called Aurelic. They make uh, various do-it-yourself amplifier boards. I mean, they're all assembled. You just have to put them in a case or put them in a a speaker enclosure however you want it to roll and they also make complete amplifiers where they're already in a case and everything and the main gist of their product is they're Wi-Fi compatible so you can control them from your smart device now I'm more interested in the board itself so I'll do my usual battery of tests on it and I told them, you know, hey, if I don't like the product, I'm going to say so. But they seem to be uh, comfortable that they sent me this product. Now, these are not your $10 eBay amplifier boards. For example, this board cost about $90. And they give you a power supply along with it and a few other pieces. So, yeah, it's a little different. And I was kind of interested in testing something that might be better quality of course we'll find out when i run my battery of tests on it now i told them that my wi-fi device my smart device a old android tablet that's about nine years old i'm probably not going to be able to test the software but yeah i might do something with it but they still sent me the board and due to the constraints of time you know, this video might get long if I try to do everything. So, without further ado, let's get into this thing. Okay, so the amp board comes in this little case. And you get the amplifier board itself. Oh, hold on. <sighs> Had to take a whiff of that electronics. Didn't really have much of an odor, though. So here is the board. It's got this little uh, stick-on antenna there. So we'll take more in-depth look at that momentarily. And you also get the plate. So if you mount it inside a speaker, you can uh, add this plate onto it, or you know, make your own case. So it comes with that hardware, some screws. Uh, knobs and hardware for that, and a little manual, and a little uh, screwdriver as well. Quick look at the specifications here. It's claiming 100 watts into 2 ohms, 60 into 4, and 30 into 8. And your other specifications there, 12 to 24 volts. So I'll do all the power tests like I usually do. So let me get this board hooked up here and we'll continue on. Let's take a little jaunt around the board here. So you have your power input terminals or an option to use an input jack. And I can see the conductor running back here for both connectors that go to the shot key diode. I checked it out. Pretty large beefy diode and I like to see that so that's polarity protection. If somebody hooks up the power backwards it won't damage the amplifier board. There's a jumper here. If you want to add a remote power switch you can plug it into here and run the power switch over to wherever you need it. I think if this board sits idle for a while it'll shut itself down. But if you do want to have a power switch, you have that option. Okay, so around the front, again, we have the barrel type power jack. Multicolor LED to show which mode this is operating in. Volume control. Low pass filter control. 3.5mm input jack. And another input connector. Of course, the speaker out connector as well. 
and we have a heat sink and they're just not gluing it or using tape it's actually screwed down so I like to see that so I'm a little concerned of the size of they're going to run this thing at 2 ohms, 100 watts. We'll check that out. This is the Wi-Fi board, and it has the little Wi-Fi antenna. You can stick to whatever surface you want to use it on. And that's pretty much the board right there. Here's the front panel if you want to use that. And before I forget, it comes with this power brick. It's a pretty stout power brick, 24 volts, 4160 milliamps. You know, that's 100 watts. However, if this can actually output 100 watts, you're going to have to input a little bit more because of the efficiency. Class D is efficient, but it is not 100% efficient. So you'd have to put in like 110, 115 watts. So I'll have to see if this thing can keep up if you're getting that kind of output from this amplifier. For some reason, they sent me the wrong, wrong type connector. Looks like it's for European. But it has the, what do they call those? IEC connector so you can plug it in to essentially any uh, uh, cord you have laying around, any of those computer type printer cords, whatever. It has all of its labeling here, certifications and stuff. But yeah, we'll check all that stuff out. Okay, let's give you the music demonstration. I have the music going. I was playing around with it. I think it's connected to the Wi-Fi. But I want to use this port here, so I'll push the button, and it turns green. Now I can hear the bass coming through. Now, I don't know how well this camera is going to pick up bass. And this is not really a subwoofer, but, you know, it's my speakers I use for testing. There we go. Music was restarting. Okay, this is the low pass set to the highest level. And to the lowest level. Now turn it up a little bit. I like the lower level setting. It it does go pretty deep. Probably with a true subwoofer, you get really good bass. But these speakers aren't too bad. You can hear some chuffing from the port. If I hit that button, it'll go back to Wi-Fi. It'll switch between Wi-Fi and connected audio. Okay, so yeah. It does what a subwoofer amp is supposed to do. Power test time. So I have it hooked up to the resistor bank set for 4 ohms. Reservoir caps on the supply. I'll test it at 24 volts, 4 ohms. And um, I'm paralleling the two channels of the supply so I can get up to 6.4 amps. So I'm sure I'll need that, especially at the higher power tests. So let me get you pointed at the scope here. Apologies for any glare on the screen. It is daytime. There's a window behind my bench. Okay, here we go. 
and adjust the waveform here. The volume control, although it uses a potentiometer, it seems to be digitally stepped because it, as I slowly turn it, it jumps in discrete steps. So I'll just have to home in as close as I can here. Okay, so it looks like it keeps increasing. Well, I'll just say 14.5. Yeah. 14.5 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms. 52.56 watts. Okay, so I'll continue to take some more measurements at different supply voltages and load impedances and come back with the results. Okay, so here's what I got. I monkeyed around with the setup here and got a little better output. 24 volts forums. I was able to get 55.7 watts, so that's very good. At 18 volts, 30.8, 12 volts, 14. These are the 8 ohm measurements. They're not going to be extremely high because you're not going to get a lot of power into an 8 ohm load with the uh, limited supply voltage. At 2 ohm loads, I was able to reach 91.1 watts, which is a little shy of the 100 watt rating. And using the supplied power brick, I was only able to get 80.8 watts. Now the heat sink and the output coils were starting to get pretty toasty. 2 ohms at 24 volts. Like I've said in the past when measuring these Class D boards, you are pushing the issue, I think, running it that hard. Personally, I don't really recommend it. Now, with music, you might be okay, but some people, if they like the type of music that have continuous bass tones and they want it cranked up fully, you're just going to roast the thing. But other types of music may not be as bad. So at least in my test, we're falling a little bit short of their measurements. If I remember, they said 60 watts, 4 ohms, 24 volts, and 100 watts, so... Not quite getting there. Okay, next we'll take a look at distortion. Okay, so I had to go make a new test signal. So I'll, I used 50 hertz for the fundamental and four and a half times that, which was, what was it, 225 at 1%. And that's my pilot signal, so I can view the distortion around that. And as you can see, distortion is very low you know, as it acquires more. See, there's really nothing showing there. Okay, so now I want to check the bandwidth of the low-pass filter setting. I want to see where it rolls off from the low end and where it rolls off from the high end. So now I have the base control or the uh, low-pass control set all the way counterclockwise and after playing around I determined the midpoint of the frequency well it's kind of flat in the area but it's around 125 Hertz so let me adjust the frequency of the function generator see where this begins to roll off well actually at the pole frequency 3 dB down so we started at is around 4.12 volts. So the 3 dB down point would be 2.91. So I'll just adjust this until we get to that point. Uh, getting there. That's about as close as I'm going to get. And we're at, uh, it looks like 207. Okay, so now I'll adjust the frequency the other direction and see where it rolls off at. Looks like 57. Okay, so now I've rotated the control fully clockwise and the center frequency or the peak of this, I guess you could say, is 
35 hertz. So now I'll adjust the frequency. So this one's rolling off at 65. And let's find the low end. So the low end rolls off at 21 hertz. So it's kind of a strange control. First of all, you have to turn it clockwise to get the lower frequency. Normally, it would make sense that it was counter, fully counterclockwise. So it's like the controls backwards. It's more like a bandpass filter instead of a low pass because it shifts the band of frequencies. At the highest end, it's at 125 with the upper cutoff at 207 and the lower at 57. And when you set the control for the lower bass, 35 hertz is the center frequency, with 65 being the upper cutoff and 21 hertz being the lower cutoff. So it's, yeah, it's not really a low pass filler. It's kind of a shiftable band pass. And I can see that being useful with certain types of frequencies where you don't want the speaker dealing with lower bass. But it's not what I would call a low-pass filter in the normal sense. Now I'll take a quick look at the app which I installed on my old tablet here. Like I say this thing's from 2013. Pretty old. And here's the device and you can name it what you want it. And if you had more amplifiers, it would list them all here. Of course, I just have the one. And if we focus on the screen, I can touch that. Now, it's hard to do through the viewfinder. If I touch that, the left and right, that tells you what channel to use with this amplifier. Of course, with a subwoofer amp, you want to use left and right. And... Mm -hmm right hmm. listen to that there's a voice a built in voice mm -hmm. is that in Chinese or something it's, it's kind of silly because it runs through a low pass filter so the voice is totally unintelligible that's just silly but anyway so yeah you can select that now the weird thing with this app is it will not find any of the music I have on this device to stream. And you know, I have another player on here. Let's see where is it? Right here. And it's a little slow right now. This thing's kind of slow. Yeah, so I have music on here, so I don't know why it's not finding it with this app. It just might be my Android's outdated. But if I go to music here, this is where you have all your music selection. And I can select from Wi-Fi to line in right on the device and watch the LED. So now it's getting the music off of that. LED went green. I hit this. Switches back over to Wi-Fi so you can control that. But yeah, that's just a basic overview of the app. Like I say, I, for some reason I can't get the songs to show up. And I don't see anybody else having that problem. So I think it's either I'm doing something dumb or... My uh, tablet here is just outdated with the Android. Okay, so in summary, it's a little subwoofer amp. It does what it's supposed to do. Wi-Fi connectivity. And uh, has decent power output for what it is. However, I didn't meet their specs. They were saying 60 watts, 4 ohms, and uh, 100 watts, 2 ohms, both at 24 volts. But I was only able to get up to 91.1. And with their included power brick, I was only able to get 80.8 because I'm sure we're exceeding the limit of that power brick. 
Of course, these were with continuous signals. If you're into hip hop or any of that music that has long continuous bass tones, I would not recommend running this at 2 ohms because of the heat. To be honest, I would stay with 4 ohms. Not going to get a lot of power with 8 ohms. So uh, 4 ohms is my target area. You can certainly use 2 ohms if you keep it under 24 volts, say 18 or 12 volts. Distortion is no issue with this thing. Didn't see anything that stood out. The filtering is kind of odd the way they have it set up. But in a way, it would match better with certain types of speakers. Smaller subwoofers, you could set the control to that higher bandpass area. You know, with larger speakers, you can set it lower. So there you have it, the Arillic Subwoofer Do-It-Yourself Amplifier Board. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.